What's the word, y'all? This might be the, the fastest, I mean the fastest post-game reaction video we'll ever get. Because I got notes for the first 47 minutes and 50 seconds, but none of that really matters. Only thing that matters is that Luka Doncic did it again. This man is 25 years old. I'm going to remind you that he's 25 years old. There's some publications that had him as the fourth best 25 and under player. Fourth on the 25 and under list. Again, fourth when he's, he might be the best player in the world. Um, th this guy's in the sixth year of his NBA career. I'm going to remind you, he's made the playoffs four or six times. The only times he missed it was his rookie season last year when they went to go get Derek Lively. And he has game winners, big moments, so on and so forth. I don't care if you have one bulk bucket in the fourth quarter, if that one bucket is the game winner. To go up 2-0... Going to Minnesota and take both of those games is so, so very huge. Um, the Minnesota Timberwolves were a slight favorite going into the series as far as, like, the way people were picking the series um, and, and, like, the betting odds and stuff. But that has shifted on the head completely. You have a 2-0 series in both conferences, and I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. Again, I got a lot of notes about this game, but none of it really, really matters. Luka Doncic gets a 1-4 flat. It's him top of the key. Everybody thin out because it don't matter who is guarding me right now. I am the guy. There was, a, there was a possession last game, and I don't know if y'all remember it, where um, they got a tip-out um, rebound from Derek Lively where he kicked it out to Luka Doncic. And Luka Doncic was maybe 26 feet away from the basket, so a normal three-point shot a little bit behind the line. And he waited for, for Anthony Edwards to get there so he could take the shot. Because Luka Doncic is way more comfortable shooting off the dribble than he is in a catch-and-shoot scenario. So when I saw they was trying to go 1-4 flat and they got the, the switch they want, food. It was a matter of whether or not Luka Doncic was going to miss or not. It had nothing, nothing Gobert could have done in that possession could have, could have prevented Luka from getting a good look. You know what I'm saying? That shot is really Luka in a gym by himself. That is crazy. Um, and Ru Rudy Gobert, man. <laughs> Rudy Gobert um, is, is, a, is a good defender in space. Not against Luka Doncic, not against Kyrie Irving, because anytime they tried to blitz Kyrie Irving in the pick and roll, Kyrie Irving just smoothly went around Rudy Gobert. Like, I, I got in my notes. Let me see. Let me see how many times I, I saw it happen in this game. I got it four times where they blitzed, uh, they blitzed Kyrie Irving, and Kyrie Irving, even before the blitz was consummated, if that's the word, Kyrie Irving blew right past him. There are certain players in the world that he cannot hold his own against. Luka Doncic is one of those players. But one thing about Rudy Gobert... It's no matter if he's playing good defense or bad defense, he always is moving like a baby gazelle. And I think part of that is him being seven foot one or whatever it is. But again, there was nothing he could have done in that possession. Luka Doncic got to the spot that he wanted and he got his shot up. And what a beautiful game for the Dallas Mavericks. Considering this is an easy one to lose, right? You take game one. In a lot of cases, your coach is going to tell you we need at least one on the road, right? The series doesn't start until the home, game, home team loses the game. Well, you did that in game number one. This is an easy game to kind of turn over and say, hey, we're going back to Dallas for game number three and game number four. But they did not do that whatsoever. And this was Luka Doncic in the third quarter. Again, I don't mind that he only scored one basket in the fourth quarter because that third quarter, I don't know if this is legitimately what it was. But as I'm watching this, it felt like he scored or assisted on every single play. It was either him. It was either Lively. It was either Gafford. It was always Luka Doncic being involved. 32, 13, and 10. And again, the biggest shot of the game. And that was that was phenomenal. What a great watch that game was, man. Um, and you know what? I was talking. I was watching this game. Um, I was watching this game at my dad's house. It was my stepmom's birthday. Uh, happy birthday. Um, and I got asked a question from somebody that's not a huge basketball fan, but they know Luka Doncic and they know Kyrie Irving. Those are two all-star, superstar caliber players, depending on who you ask. And they were asking me, who, who's the third guy? Who's the third best player on the team? And I, I took a second. And you want to know the name I said? And I really do believe this. It's Derek Lively. It's the 20-year-old rookie. Because this man's uh, this man's impact on both sides of the ball is just, just ridiculous. And game number one, Anthony Edwards tried to get to the basket. Or he did not try to get to the basket. Or, or I guess he tried. He just struggled to get to the basket. And all that was like Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively being out, down there. And in game number two, they made it a point. You saw it very early on. Anthony Edwards had 10 points in the first quarter. A lot of that was just him getting to the basket, either finishing or getting fouled. And then once we got to that second half, a lot of that died down. These guys... It just it, it makes it so much difficult when you have players on the court that cannot shoot because a guy like Gafford and guys like Derek Lively can kind of just chill. There were some lineups ran today by um, the Minnesota Timberwolves that I don't know the lineup data behind it, but I felt kind of iffy about it because it was Kyle Anderson, it was Rudy Gobert, and it was Jaden McDaniels on the court together. And if I am a team guard in that team defensively, I feel pretty good about our chances because though Kyle Anderson gave us 11 points in game number one, we're not worried about Kyle Anderson and his 17-second jump shot. We're not worried about Jaden McDaniels even though he killed us at game number one. That's not who he normally is, right? So let's pack the paint. And Anthony Edwards is the only ball handler on the court here. There's no Mike Conley on the court. So 
uh, let's just dominate the paint. And Anthony Edwards wants to get to the basket, but we got three bodies here because we don't trust nobody else on the team to beat us. And I thought that the way that the Dallas Mavericks had defended in that second half was just so very beautiful. Now, part of it was Minnesota missing a bunch of shots. I won't, I don't want to look past that. But again, the defense is just electric. Um, for a moment, I thought this was just a Nas Reed game where he scored 23 points in this one and he missed the big shot to tie it. Um, I, I was very curious to see how they was going to play it because we had a game in the first round, uh, or maybe it was a second round versus Denver or first round versus Phoenix. It's all blending together where Nas Reed had a really good game. When the fourth quarter, he scored a bunch of different baskets. And then with three minutes left in that fourth quarter, they brought back in Carl Anthony Towns. And I was uh, watching this game with my boy Derek and Derek's like, oh, I'm surprised that they did that because Nas Reed had it going. And in this one, they opted to keep Nas Reed on the floor because he hit seven three pointers. And I was just curious on whether or not they was going to throw the max player, the second best player on the team have you want to look at Carl Anthony Towns back into the game even if his backup was having the game that he was and they kept Nas Reed on the floor and Nas Reed got a good look at the end of that game and uh, the ball rattled out like it, it just rattled out I think both of his misses were rattled out misses um, I would have preferred that Anthony Evers tried to get to the basket in this one down by one with however many seconds was left but you know it, it, it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, it is what it is. I also got asked while I was at this party um, <laughs> because they was watching Rudy Gobert get, get like killed and drop and, and killed on the blitz when Kyrie Irving was there. Why don't they take it out? Where the like as much as like it is what it is Rudy Gobert where he cannot guard those two guards on the opposing team. But when he is off the court, the defense is just so very different and so so much worse that yeah, though he's getting beat on the drop or he's getting beat uh, on the hedge or whatever. That's like the best they got to offer right now because the Carl Anthony Towns and Nas Reed minutes are just hemorrhaging points at the end of the day. So it's just interesting to see them have to stay with Rudy Gobert. I mean, in this one, plus minus don't mean a goddamn thing in a game like this, but he's one of the few people on the team with the plus, plus minus in this one. And I thought overall he had a solid game until it was getting to the point where he had to guard Luka or guard Gary Irvin. They did blitz a lot more in this game versus game number one where I think I counted three blitzes with Rudy Gobert and a, a couple other blitzes with Carl Anthony Towns the primary defender. None of that none of that even really matters because again Luka Doncic hit the shot and they just have to go back home and take care of business. I mean the, the Wolves are in the same spot that they had the Denver Nuggets in last last round and the Denver Nuggets pushed it to seven. You know what I'm saying? And it ended up being a really good and really close game. So it's not over for the Wolves, but the way Luka Doncic is performing right now, because early in this game, I was a little bit worried because they showed him at the at the uh, check-in table a few different times, hunched over and like messing with his knee. I'm like, man, I, I just don't want to see another player get injured because everybody in the playoffs have been injured at this point. And he's playing through it, but I was a little bit worried that maybe this won't be a Luka Doncic game. And boy, was it. One four flat hindsight obviously because if Luca misses that shot then I guess it doesn't matter I'm surprised they didn't throw a second body towards his way late in that clock when they saw him starting to dance over Rudy Gobert because if I'm not mistaken PJ Washington was on the left wing at that point and in this game PJ Washington was 0 for 4 from 3 and it was Kyle Anderson guarding him I'm just a little bit surprised that they didn't throw a late double at him to make him make a decision. Either you shoot over both of us or you trust P.J. Washington. And hell, P.J. has hit some really big shots in his playoffs. A couple game winners in his playoffs. So maybe they didn't want to give that up. But I'm taking an open P.J. Washington shot over a step back Luka 3 because there's nobody in the world that does a step back 3 point shot better than him in 2024. I said 2024 because you know the guy James Harden is the greatest of all time at that. Um, but what a game from the, from the man. And now they're two games away from the NBA Finals. Before the play Playoff started, we did something on the pod where we went through all of the teams in the playoffs and we said, what are their chances of, like, are they a real legitimate uh, championship contender? And we got to the Dallas Mavericks. I sat there for a second thinking about it. And what I said was when you have one of the three best players in the world in a really competent defense, because that's what they were at the second half of the season. Now they're well past comp competent. They're really, really damn, they're damn good. Um, when you have one of the three best players in basketball and you have a competence, a great defense, anything is really possible. And we're seeing them two games away from being in the finals. Um, both of these series are 2-0. I don't know what happens if, knock on wood, I don't want them to end the sweeps because I like both of these series right now. But I don't know what, I don't know what happens if, if both of them end very early. Do we still wait to June 6th? No, it has to be. All right, that's all I got to say. Luka Doncic is a madman. Shout out to the Dallas Mavericks to take care of business in a game that they probably should have lost. Oh, I know what the Wolves fans are going to say. The J.D. McDaniels foul slash out of bounds play. Yeah. I, but again, I'm not one to talk about officiating because I don't even think that's an officiating thing. That's a rule book thing more than anything. 
Because when you're when you're reviewing that play, you can't call a foul that you missed. It's just about who touched the ball less. At least that's what we're saying on the broadcast. So I know that's what the Wolves fans are going to hang their hat because, yes, that was a big one in that one. I'm also wearing Mike Conley merch. I just realized that. Didn't even put it together. Mike Conley had a solid game. Either way, um, 2-0. 2-0 series, man.